Hey YouTube, it's Getty Man here, and welcome to my ultimate guide to the Star Trek Online Summer Event. In this guide, I'll be covering all the activities, strategies, accolades, and more to get the most out of your relaxing stay on Ryza. To start, this year they made the following activities count towards your daily event progress. Dance Off, Flying High, Making Waves, Horgan Hunt, Ryza Biathlon, and Sun Sand and Scavenging. I'll get into explaining all of these soon, but first, let's talk about the grand prize this year, the Ryzen Weather Control Vessel. Once you complete your daily progress for 20 days, you will receive this ship as an account-wide unlock. Look for a review of the ship and a reward overview video soon after this video goes live. The first activity I'm going to cover is Flying High. This mission has you flying multiple courses on your floater. In the middle of writing the script for this video, some changes were made to this activity that makes it actually worth doing quite a bit and it's part of a strategy that I'll be talking about later on in the video. However, for now, just know that it's worth 50 favors and you should do it often. The courses themselves are quite easy to follow. Simply follow the arrows and you're on your way. You need to complete three of them to finish. The next activity is Dance Off. The dance instructor will shout out a dance move every 15 seconds and all you need to do is do that dance. You'll be rewarded for doing three, then five more, then 10 more, and finally 20 more for a total of 38 dances, or nine and a half minutes. My advice for this is to pin your emote box to the screen and expand it to only show the dance emotes. Another thing to note is that when the dance instructor calls out just dance, you'll need to do the dance mix emote, not just any random dance. Next up is the Horgan Hunt. For this activity, you'll be taken to the skies to hunt down the Horizon Statues of Love to get a decent sum of 75 favors. Each one you collect will also reward you 2-5 to five favors and a chance for a tropical bird egg. I highly recommend an impulsive floater for this activity. Here's a map of the two strategies I use depending on the layout in which the Horgans spawn. You can also find a link to the images in the description below. Once you collect all 10 required, hail the Horgon Collector to get your reward. Sun, Sand, and Scavenging is one of the activities I frequently skip. You're tasked with hunting down temporal artifacts by scanning as you move around the map in a big game of hot or cold. This activity will normally only reward around 20 favors, but will give you 50 for its bonus slot in the event timer. Once you've determined where your artifact is, you'll be required to dig it up and hail a Savik for your reward. There are 15 locations total, and I've made a map so you can track them down a bit easier by noting down which ones aren't in the direction you're being told to go. The link to a big version of this can also be found in the description as well. The next two events are competitive. So as a prerequisite, you will need both an impulsive floater and impulsive power board if you want to win consistently. Making waves is the first of these two competitive races. The race path is pretty easy to follow and only takes place on a power board. You can cut the first corner and this should put you in the lead early on as seen here. Also, you can boost out of the starting gate if you ride up against the boards that are blocking your way on the starting line. Another important thing to note for both this race and the next one is if you get too many speed boosts in a row and jump up a ramp which gives you another speed boost, when you hit the ground, you'll be booted off the power board. So make sure you're quick to reactivate it. If you place first, you'll get 75 favors and 12 tropical tags. Second is 50 favors and 6 tags. Third is 25 favors and 3 tags. Finally, if you finish, you'll get 15 favors and 2 tags. Rise at Biathlon is the last activity that shows up on the schedule. This one starts off as a reverse making waves power board race, but ends up taking you towards the spawn point. Once you get to the main beach, you'll have to be quick to switch from your power board to your floater. A lot of people switch early, but you really want to wait and switch here under the red flag on the small ramp to not be disqualified. Something I also forgot to mention is that if you jump with the power board and let go of the throttle, you'll stop without skidding forward. Once you're on your floater, just fly through the hoops to the flag and claim your prize. The rewards are the same as making waves. There is one other activity that will not provide you with daily progress, or many favors. This activity is Castles in the Sand. Simply collect wet and dry sand along with some rocks and sticks to build a sand castle. You'll encounter water, birds, monkeys, and bugs trying to thwart your efforts along the way, all for 20 favors. Now that all of the activities are out of the way, let's talk about accolades. Denied Mokbara can be earned by Federation and Federation-allied characters by landing on the eastmost arch and talking to the Klingon that spawns there. The spawning is a bit finicky, but he used to spawn every hour at half past the hour. Practitioner of Mokbara can be earned for doing the same thing on KDF and KDF-aligned characters. Fireworks Observer can be obtained by being in the front of the resort on the beach or boardwalk when the fireworks show starts. When all the torches on the island ignite, you'll know it's about to start. Onlooker can be earned by watching the trilling Klingon fighting around nightfall when the torches ignite. They spawn in front of the floater vendor on the boardwalk. 
Tepid can be earned by getting the third place flag in the biathlon. It also unlocks the bronze superior floater for purchase. Balmy can be obtained by getting the second place flag in the biathlon, and will unlock the silver superior floater for purchase. Sizzling is obtained for getting the first place flag in the biathlon and will unlock the gold superior floater for purchase. Walk the boardwalk is awarded for walking down the boardwalk to the floater vendor. Rise a roofer can be obtained by landing on the roof of the large building the dance floor is in front of. Arc flight mastery is obtained by flying under one of the northeastern arches. Why are you flying over a volcano is obtained by landing on the highest point in the map or otherwise known as the tallest mountain. Won't look down is awarded for landing on the middle section of the bridge. Unauthorized beach party is awarded for joining the bonfire party north of the promenade at nightfall when all the torches are lit. The big gear can be obtained by finding all of the vista birds. Here is an easy path you can follow to get them all in one go. Alright, so while this is playing, you guys get to listen to Future Me. And I say Future Me because the me you were just listening to was recorded like a year and a half ago. Um, if you don't want to watch this, by the way, if you already know, have the accolade or just want to skip it or fast forward through it, that's fine. The This segment ends at 10 minutes and 19 seconds in. Um, but I figured you guys might want some insight into the process and, and what it took to record this and, and put this all together. It, like I said, the me that was recorded earlier is a year and a half old. So, you know, it's these, these types of videos take a long time to make, but, um, anyways, something funny about the segue or segment, uh, this isn't, this isn't scripted by the way. Uh, this is just me talking during a boring section. But uh, something interesting about this is that this wasn't all recorded in one go. I had to edit everything to make it look like one segment, but you can see it's, it's kind of sloppily done because I won't be standing in the same position when I come out of the black screen after the cutscene there. If you watch right after this one here. And yep, standing in a different spot. So, uh, you know, 2D planes, when you're looking at a map of this, like, and I've seen maps, I, I used a map of this uh, accolade to, to find these birds. But when you're looking at a 2D map and, you know, this elevation on a 3D plane, it, it makes it much more difficult. So I figured this might help some people to just be able to instantly path to where they need to go. But uh, yeah, this video is like three years in the making. I have footage that goes back to 2018 that I've, I'm using in the video, actually. Um, the, the footage of my Gem Hadar is all from 2018. So, you know, like I said, these videos take a long time to make and they take a lot of energy and effort. So the, the, the people that do stick with my channel and do watch my content. I really appreciate you guys. I, I don't really have a lot of opportunity to say that because I don't live stream. I'm really bad at talking without interacting with somebody, as you can probably tell by this entire voiceover. But um, I, I just like to help people. I find that scripted guides are probably my best content that people enjoy watching. I have a lot of plans for the future, and I plan to make a lot of guides for different things, including the game as a whole. I want to start a video series on basically just how to play Stowe, from novice to expert, or I guess we'll call it elite, but that's in the works, so if that interests anybody, that'll be out sometime this year i can't guarantee it it's it's gonna take a lot more effort than even this takes and i've also got to do the reward overview video which is gonna take you know a long time so in the meantime uh, i have some other smaller videos planned and yeah so i'll just let the finish play out and to see how cringe this voiceover is and if I want to keep it in or not. But.
Also, huge shout out to by any other name seven on Reddit. Thank you so much for the support and for making my day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Catch Me If You Tukin can be obtained by talking to Pavel and finding him in the cave just past the bridge. Ducks of Hazard is awarded for talking to Pavel and finding him under the easternmost arch in the north part of the map. Gorilla in 60 seconds is awarded by talking to Pavel and finding him hidden by the lighthouse on top of a mountain in the northwest part of the map. The Frog and the Furious can be obtained by finding Pavel in his final location in the cave across from Savik's camp. A light we landed on a lighthouse can be obtained by landing on the easternmost and northernmost lighthouses. In a geological sense, is awarded for finding all 20 different temporal artifacts in sun, sand, and scavenging. Sandcastle starter, sequence, set, stalwart, and savant can be obtained by making 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 sandcastles respectively. Sandcastle stylist is awarded for making sandcastles with all possible walls, keeps, and towers. This will also unlock the ability to make sand monuments to your faction, unless you're a Jem'Hadar, sadly. Ripper is obtained by winning one powerboard race in first place, or by completing 20 in total. Samba is obtained by speaking with the Ryza dance instructor and will also unlock the Samba dance emote. Samba Master is unlocked by completing the dance-off and will unlock the advanced Samba dance emote. Finally, Master Relaxer is obtained by getting Practitioner of Makbara or Denied Makbara, Walk to the Boardwalk, Won't Look Down, Why Are You Flying Over a Volcano, Riser Roofer, Arc Flight Mastery, Onlooker, Fireworks Observer, Lightly Landed on a Lighthouse, and The Frog and the Furious. This will also unlock the ability to purchase the Ryzen Doffs. A few more final things before I go. The Doff missions you can do to make both the Tropical Birds and Feather Monkeys are located at the top of the promenade. The missions are available from the Ornithologist and Monkey Trainer respectively. Both the rare and non-rare monkeys and birds can be traded into them as well, for marked packages of your choice. There will of course be a separate video for rewards just like the Winter Event Rewards Overview video that I made coming soon. If you're planning to grind out these favors, I would highly recommend getting 3 characters in Impulsive Floater, and 1 character in Impulsive Powerboard. All 3 will participate in the Horgan Hunt by character hopping. This can even be done on more than 3, but 3-4 three to four is the easiest to manage. The Powerboard will be used by 1 character to race in the Making Waves and Biathlon events. Finally, in the time in between these three events, do the Flying High activity for the newly added 50 favors, which can be done every 15 minutes. Then do either Sandcastle builds or Scavenge for Artifacts, depending on the time and preference. I also recommend making a Lola Nut or Ryzen Triple, using uncommon food for the Lola Nut Triple or rare food for the Ryzen Triple. The food needed for these triples is available from the Ryzen Reward Vendor on the Boardwalk. Both triples will provide you with a slight speed boost to your floater. And with that, this is Guttyman, signing off. Have a good one. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, compliments, or complaints, please put them in the comments below. And as always, take care out there.